How are you? As long as you're not robbing me, everything's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not robbing you. <laughs> these are some cool little blunderbusses. Where did you get these? Well, my grandma recently passed away, and I was basically cleaning out her garage and found these in a box. OK. These are flint locks. This flint would fly forward, hit this right here, which would cause sparks, and also make this fly up at the same time, hit your powder in the pan. That would go through the hole, ignite the gunpowder, and everything would come out the end. Wow. Okay. I had no idea. OK, but you have heard the term flash in the pan? I have. So when this came forward and hit this, sometimes just your powder would ignite and your gun wouldn't go off, and that was a flash in the pan. OK. <laughs> I'm here at the pawn shop today to sell the two guns that I found in my grandma's garage. We were cleaning out the garage. Uh, there was a box there. I dug around through it, and there they were. I'm selling the guns today for $6,000. They look Middle Eastern, Ottoman Empire, or something like that. You know, Middle Eastern guns were a lot more show than other countries. You know, I mean, they put a lot more importance in decorating the guns than actually using them. What do you want to do with them? I'd like to sell them. OK. And do you have any idea what you want for them? A fair price that I thought would be right around 6000 OK. So um, your guess is right around as good as mine. Guns from the Middle East, it's very difficult to date them. Even if there was their name, I can't read Farsi or Arabic. So uh, do you mind if I have someone come in and help me out a little bit with them? I don't. He just knows more about them than I do. Okay. okay? So if you don't mind hanging out a few minutes, I'll get him down here. We'll look at him and... Maybe we can do some. OK. I'll be right back. I'm really excited they're calling an expert in. I think these guns are really valuable. If I get the full $6,000, I'm going to take my girlfriend to Jamaica. They're called DAG, D-A-G. DAG flintlock blunderbusses. These were in vogue from about 1750 to about 1820. That's when they were being made, but they were still being used up until about 1900. OK. You know, the flintlocks that they were manufacturing in the region, and this is all the Middle Eastern region, from the Barbary Coast to what is now known as Turkey, were guns that were brought in from Europe. And then they copied them. And then they kind of came up with their own form. And this is indicative of that area. These Middle Eastern weapons, they're usually highly decorated and embellished. And it even goes back to the time of the Crusades. There have been record accounts of the Christians being able to see the Ottoman soldiers approaching because the sun was reflecting off of all the gold and silver decoration of their armor and their weapons. Same thing holds true to these. Uh, there's an issue, uh -huh. OK? If you look down this barrel, what do you see wrong? Um, that it's not welded. If you were to load black powder in this and actually attempt to fire it, this would peel open and explode in your hand. And the reason for it, see those open fissures mm -hmm. in the metal? When this was being formed, they never welded the seam so it wouldn't come apart. This is death waiting to happen. This one was actually made just to be intended to be hung on the wall as a cool thing. OK, what are they worth? Uh, the value, you know, two to three thousand. This one, thousand to fifteen hundred. Okay. I mean, it, just because if you hung it on the wall, it's gonna look bitchin'. Okay. Thanks, man. Absolutely, Rick. Take care. Good luck. I think Rick should buy these because they're just so unique. There's nothing else like them out there, and I think he'll probably sell them pretty quick. I'll give you like twelve hundred bucks for them. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. That's not enough. He just he just said that this was worth twenty five hundred on its own. He said worth two to three thousand dollars. Okay, and this one thousand fifteen hundred. This one's going to be difficult, more difficult to sell because the barrel's screwed up and all that other stuff. I mean, what is your best price? Thirty thirty five hundred. There's no money in it for me. That way, there's not. I got to make a living. I got to resell these. Will you do three? No. <laughs> I have to retail them. I have to make a profit. I got to pay sales commissions. I have all the expenses, OK? What's your best offer? I'll tell you what, I'll go 1800 bucks. I mean, that's what I could do. Will you do two? I'm going to regret this, but uh, we'll do it. I'll meet you right over there, and I'll write you up, OK? Deal. Well, if I would have gotten the 6000 we would have been going to Jamaica, but I guess we're going to Cleveland instead. Wow.
This thing is nice. This is a casting out. This is like one of the holy grails of American coins. I'll do 95 and that's it. No, I don't think so. I think I'm going to take it home.